Are you worried if you'll be able to get a job as a Blender user in the industry? Have you ever wondered if it will affect your chances? Well, if you have, then you've asked yourself the same question that every Blender user asked themselves at one point or another. In this video, I will talk about what the game and film industry recruiters look for when hiring 3D artists, some of which you probably never heard. I'll also talk about some freelancing and full-time jobs that you can get as a 3D artist, which of them rely more on the tools you use and which rely on other aspects such as your personality and skills. Make sure to stick to the end as I will share two interesting experiences that I had in the past with the game industry as a Blender user, some of which might actually surprise you. These stories will give you a very good idea on how Blender will affect your chances in the industry. In the background, I'll add the time lapse of my latest character, the Librarian, to keep things fun and dynamic. There will also be some Blender EB demo of this character at the end of this video. Enjoy! I'd like to start by saying that Blender and any other 3D program is a tool, just like a pencil. Understanding this is very important for the rest of this video and your career and passion in general. To understand when Blender affects your chances to get a job in the industry, we need to understand what the recruiters look for. Here are eight things that will help the recruiter decide whether you get the job or not. These are in no particular order that will differ from one job to another and from one situation to another. So we have the experience the skill, the tool you use, your potential, your visible personality, your subtle personality, your connection, so whether you know you got there through a connection or not, and last but not least, availability. Okay, so let me quickly break down each and one of them for you guys so that you can understand in which cases will one rank higher than the other. So first of all, we have the experience and skill. You might wonder why is skill and experience separate? Because you might be a very skillful artist, you might be a master at what you do, but you don't have the experience in working in an industry or under a deadline or even manage a team. So depending on what kind of job they're looking to hire you for, they will either rank experience higher than the skill or the skill over experience. Next is the tool. So the recruiter wants to know, what kind of tools do you use? Can you get the job done? Can you use the same tools they're using? If you can't use the same tools they're using, is it possible to use a different tool and get the job done and still be able to work with them? A lot of these things will depend on whether you know, you're taking a short-term or long-term contract, if you're working with a big team or a small team, and I'll get to all of that in a minute. So let's put the tool on the side and talk about potential. Okay, so potential is very important in some cases and in other cases, it's not. If you are going to do a really quick one month freelancing job, then your potential doesn't really matter that much. They're looking for your current skill. Where are you at right now? Can you get the job done or not? And that's about it. But if you are going to stay with them for a long time, so maybe they are trying to hire you for a year, over a year, maybe five, 10 years, then they want to know, will you stay at the same level in five years or will you improve or maybe even get worse? In that case, the, the potential will be important. You see, different cases, different situations, they will look at different things in different ways. Now onto the thing that most people don't take into consideration, but it is one of the most important things, your personality. So the way I like to look at it is in two categories. We got the visible personality and the subtle personality. So let me explain the difference. The visible personality is usually something that you can put into words. So if you can tell me, oh, that person is confident, and you can tell me why that person is confident, then you know that's a visible personality, it's a visible trait. For example, someone comes in, I'm the recruiter, I'm trying to recruit someone, uh, it's the way they talk, they, they're very confident in what they say, and that can be a very important factor if I'm trying to hire someone to lead a project, for example, or lead a team. Because if they don't have the confidence, they don't have a strong personality, they won't be able to lead a team of artists. Because if you're an artist, then you will know that we are very, very difficult to work with. But for example, if the recruiter is looking for someone to do a lot of cleanup jobs, you know, a lot of uh, fixing this and fixing that, then you basically want someone that's easygoing. You don't want someone that's very difficult to work with. So the personality of the person is going to be very important and it will depend on what kind of job they're going to get and what kind of team they're going to work with. They, you know, the recruiter also wants to recruit someone that will get along with the team they're going to work with. Okay. Next, we got the subtle personality. Now, the subtle personality is 
Mm. I'm pretty sure you've been in a situation where you just meet someone and you don't know what it is, but you feel good around that person or uh, you feel comfortable with that person. And there are cases where you meet someone and for no apparent reason, you don't, you just dislike that person. You just don't get along with that person. And these are a lot of subtle things, you know, it could be something as simple as, you know, in the past, maybe there was someone you didn't like and they looked a certain way and then the person you're trying to recruit looks, looks somewhat similar. You might not feel comfortable around that person. So this is something you can't really control. It's, it's going to depend who you're in front of. It's basically luck, but it is something that, you know, the, it will affect whether you get recruited for that job or not. Last but not least, we got connection and availability. So connection is basically when you know someone in the company and they recommended to get you hired. So they're the one who got you to the interview, basically. And if that happened, then your chances of getting hired, you know, shoots off the roof. Why? One, because the recruiter will feel connected to you in a way. They'll feel comfortable with you, familiar with you. They're, they won't feel like they're talking to a stranger and that just breaks the ice. And two, this is really important. They'll feel like they got assurance, right? Because the person that they trust said that you're a someone who's good enough to hire for that company. So that really raises your chances of getting hired. And then we got availability. Now that will mainly depend on what kind of job you know, you're getting. So if they're looking to hire you for a one month job, then they don't really care if you're available after that or not. But if they're looking to hire you for over a year, they want to know what are your plans? You know, the recruiter might ask you, what do you plan to do in a year? Where do you see yourself? Because that's important for them. Okay, so now that we covered what the recruiters look for when hiring someone and that they rank these things differently in different situations, let's focus on the tools. So in which cases they will rank the tools really high and it will be really important which tool you're using and in which cases it doesn't matter. First thing you need to know is what kind of job you're getting, right? So are you going to be freelancing for game companies or maybe you will get a full-time contract with the company of your dreams? Maybe you want to go to Pixar or Blizzard or all of these companies. That will basically decide whether the tool you're using is important or not. Here's why. Now, most people will tell you that if you're freelancing, the tool you use does not matter. That's not really the case, at least not always. You need to understand that there are different types of freelancing. So for those who don't know, freelancing is basically when you're self-employed and you do really small contracts with clients or you work with companies in short periods of times. And that's the part that most people don't really know. So when you work with clients, yes, the program you use does not matter whatsoever. In fact, all they wanna know is, will you get the job done in the deadline? That's about it. So if you're using Blender, 3ds Max, Maya, any other program, they don't care. And in fact, you get an advantage for using Blender because one, less costs, and two, because it's less costs, you can charge differently. So if you want to charge the same, you can charge the same. If you want to charge less than other people because you have less costs, then you got that advantage, right? But then freelancing also means that you can work with companies for short periods of time. So maybe there's a company that has a project from a client and that project, they need an animator for only one month, right? But they don't need an animator all the time that works with them, you know, with a full-time contract. In that case, they look for freelancers. And that's something that's actually quite common here in France. That's usually how it goes. And for that, you know, they need you for that month. They don't have time for you to learn the program, okay? They want you just to get in, get the job done. They need to make sure that you know how to do this kind of job and then get out. They pay you and you're done. In that case, the program you use is very, very important. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is that learning a different program is not as difficult as you might think. So yeah, if you're learning a 3D program for the first time in your life, you've never done any other 3D things in the past, then it'll take a while because you need to learn all of the terminology. You need to get used to the whole thing. You know, you need to understand what a bump map is, what texturing is, modeling, sculpting, the whole thing. But once you learn it with one program, you can easily transition that to a different one. Even if the program is very, very different, you know, the UI is different, the way it works is different. The principles are the same. You know, modeling is modeling, sculpting is sculpting, texturing is texturing, rigging, animation, the whole thing. So usually, at least for me in my case, because I had to learn a lot of different programs. I had to transition all the time in the past. I worked in different internships, different companies that use different programs. I've done that with 3D and I've also done that with 2D, with VFX. 
I had to learn 3ds Max, I had to learn Maya, I had to learn Blender, ZBrush, other programs, I don't even remember the names, I had to learn After Effects, Nuke, which basically does the same thing as comp you know, composition. And every time I had to learn a new program, sure, it was scary at first, but in around a week, I got used to the program and in two weeks, I was creating work good enough for the company, see? so. Obviously, if you stay longer, you'll get even better at it, but that's all you need to do, you know, need as time goes to basically transition everything you learned in the past to the new program. Okay, so now that we've covered freelancing, let's talk about full-time jobs. So if you want to be recruited by Pixar, Blizzard, or any other company that you've dreamt to work with, if you're looking to stick with them for a long time, so you're looking for a long-term contract, then the tool you're using, here's the good news, does not matter, Blender or not. 3ds Max, Maya, they don't care. In fact, I've heard of stories where they've recruited people that didn't even know how to use 3D programs. Like they've never done 3D, but they're good at concept art, for example, and they taught them in that company how to do 3D. Now, why is that? Why don't they care about the tool you're using? Well, because of what I said earlier, learning a program and especially transitioning from one program to another does not take time. It's, it takes virtually no time. It's very, very fast compared to becoming an artist. Now, becoming an artist, that takes time, right? And they know that. So they're not looking to invest in someone who's not a good artist for them, for what they're looking for. But they're willing to invest in someone who doesn't know how to use the program because they couldn't care less. It doesn't cost them anything. For them, one week is nothing. So as you can see, in many situations, the tool you use does not matter, except in the very specific ones where, you know, the person that's hiring you does not have time for you to learn anything else. So they need you to know the program right away. You know, it's a quick job. If you don't know how to use it and they can't make use of you. That's the only case where the tool you use will become essential. But again, as I've said, you can always learn a new tool whenever you want. So if you ever have a free week, if you want to transition, that's when you do it. So let me talk a little about some experiences I had that might shock you when I tried to look for a job with Blender. And I'm gonna talk about two different experiences. The first story I'm gonna tell you about is a funny experience that I had in the past where I applied for an internship that my friend applied for as well. And he got the job even though you would have expected me to get it for the simple fact that I was using the program that they use. That's actually a game company that uses Blender. So they transitioned, I think, from 3ds Max to Blender at that point. So at that point, they were using Blender, that's it. And uh, he was using 3ds Max, I was using Blender. Now, when we both applied for the job, I'm not gonna name the company's name just to be safe. And when we applied for the job, uh, we got a list of assignments. So we both got the same assignments, the same thing to do. They asked us to model something and texture it. Again, I can't disclose what they asked us to do exactly. In fact, I think I signed something when I uh, followed that assignment. I, I had to basically say that I won't say what that assignment was. Uh, so just to be safe, I'm not gonna mention anything, but the, the thing they asked us to do was really simple to do. If you had basic modeling and texturing knowledge, you'd be able to get it. And it doesn't really show much of your skill. It doesn't show much of what you can do. Uh, but that's what they asked for, so we both did it. And I saw his results, he saw mine, and honestly, they were both really good. Uh, there was no problems with the modeling or texturing. They were both well-rendered, well-modeled, and uh, we sent our work. Funny enough, he got the job. Uh, again, I, as I said, the only reason I would have expected myself to get it over him is because I was using Blender and they use Blender. So he had to learn Blender when he went and worked with them. Uh, whereas if I got hired, I wouldn't have to learn Blender. I would have just integrated right away and actually helped them because if I remember correctly, they only recently integrated to Blender while, while as, you know, I already knew how Blender worked. So uh, I kind of got curious. I was wondering why I didn't get the job because I know that we, we didn't get interviewed. So they didn't really know who we were. Uh, it's not like they, they took us because of uh, our personalities or experience or anything else. It's really only that test that they sent us that basically helped them decide who to take. And uh, funny enough, you know, I had someone who worked there. I knew someone who worked there and he basically had a high level in that company. So he asked, he figured out uh, why I didn't get hired because he saw my work and, uh, you know, he, he knew it was good enough to get me hired and he understood that I was using Blender at that time. So he got kind of curious too. Anyways, uh, long story short, uh, the reason I didn't get hired is because the style in which I rendered 
the thing they told me to render and textured it was very different from my friends and my friend's render was a lot closer to the game they were creating and you know hiring for so the funny thing here is that they didn't tell us uh, which game they were creating they didn't talk about its style they didn't talk about anything about it so we both didn't know about the game they're creating all we knew is that you know model this texture it this texture this and that's it they didn't even tell us how to do it so uh, anyways they prefer taking someone whose style is naturally uh, closer to the game they're creating and they want him to work for than someone who needed to basically change the style they're doing. That's probably for two reasons. One is uh, if since they didn't tell us which style to go for, you know, I went for more stylized look, he went for a more realistic look, and you can imagine it from my channel, a lot of my characters are stylized because that's what I enjoy to do. Uh, you know, so one, they know that I would probably not enjoy the work as much as he would. He would enjoy it a lot more because that's something what he does already. And two, they don't know if I can probably transition to, to creating realistic stuff from stylized stuff, which uh, obviously you can, because to learn stylized, you need to learn uh, realistic. So for me, it's probably more of the, uh, you know, I'm not gonna enjoy the work as much. And uh, it's a lot easier to learn a new program or transition to a new program than change the style of work that you do, because it'll still take time. So if, if I'm not used to doing realistic stuff, then. I'm kind of have to take like a few weeks to get used to that as well. So what I want you to take from this first story is that anything can happen. You don't don't expect something to go the way you expect it to go. It never does, almost never does. So just because I knew Blender and the company used Blender doesn't mean they're going to automatically hire me. That's not the only thing the companies are looking for when hiring someone. Even in this case uh, where, you know, it's just a short internship, they still prefer to hire the other person whose artistic style was closer to what they're looking for than hire someone who knows how to use their program. So the second story that I'm going to talk about is a very interesting experience that happened after my internship. So this is a situation that was quite the opposite of the first one. This is where you wouldn't expect me to get this kind of offer because I use Blender and for other reasons that I'll talk about in a second. You see, when I first started my YouTube channel last year, I started gaining some online presence. When that happens, you start getting a lot of job offers. Now, a lot of these offers are usually small freelancing jobs, but sometimes you get bigger ones. So one of the big offers that I got was a game company that worked with big titles that offered me a lead character job for a game that they were going to create. Now, that was really exciting because one, if you're offering someone a lead anything, so someone who's going to lead a project, usually they require a three to six year experience, which I did not have at all. Two, they didn't use Blender. They used a lot of different programs and a lot of the criteria, the things they acquired from the person they're offering their job to, I did not have. How do I know that? Well, I simply went to the website AFJV. Now that's a website, if you're in France and you wanna find a game job, just go to that website, all the game companies in here, when they are looking for someone, they'll go to that website and post the offers over there. And usually it's the artist who goes there and starts applying for the job. So when I went to that website, I found the same exact offer that was offered through email. In fact, I was able to tell exactly what they were looking for because they mentioned everything in that offer. So they were talking about programs I never used. I think there were like two to three programs. I think it was Maya, Substance Painter, 3D Code, maybe ZBrush. I don't really remember anymore. It's been a year. They were also asking for three to six years of experience in the game company. A lot of stuff that I did just not tick. And in fact, if I've seen that offer, even if I was interested in that company, I would have never applied because I wouldn't have even imagined to stand a chance to get that job. With that said, I didn't even have to apply, I actually got offered that job. Now you might ask yourself, if I did not tick all of these boxes, why did I get offered that specific job? Sadly, this time I didn't really have an inside person to find out exactly why I was offered this job. Long story short, I never really took it because as you can see, you know, I have my YouTube channel that I'm running and for anyone who doesn't know, this is what I do day and night. So I'm not really interested in working with the company, but it was a really exciting opportunity that I would have taken otherwise if I didn't have this. And from my own take on this, basically what I think happened is that the recruiter saw my art station, they saw my work, they liked the characters that I did, and it probably uh, went really well with the game they're creating. Maybe it was very close to the style, I don't really know. And the other thing is that through my YouTube channel, 
they kind of had an indirect interview with me, I guess, because, you know, you see the person behind the channel. So you kind of know that person a bit more than someone who you've never met before. Even if the, per you know, behind the camera, you you're not really representing yourself to 100%. It still shows a bit of you. So maybe the recruiter got a bit of that as well. And also the fact that, you know, running a channel and having some social online presence, it takes a lot of work and it shows some responsibility. And maybe that also helped uh, the recruiter decide to offer me this job. Okay, so what do we take from both of these stories that I told you? That, you know, the tool is the last thing that matters at the end of the day. You know, the recruiters, the companies, the, the whoever is trying to hire you, they're not looking at the tool you're using. They're really looking at uh, your artistic side of things. They're looking at uh, your personality. They're looking at a lot of different things. So here's my advice. Stop worrying about whether you can get a job with Blender or not. It doesn't really matter. You know, I'm doing this video because I had these thoughts as well when I first started Blender. Because I was in a school that used 3ds Max. And, you know, my university is a long story uh, that I talked about in the past. It's not really our school, but anyways, we did learn some 3D stuff. So I learned 3ds Max in school and I learned Maya and my internships. And when I started learning Blender in between both uh, these two programs, I was very worried whether I could get a job or not. So I understand if you've asked yourself that question, because I've asked myself that question too. But being where I'm, I am at today and knowing a lot of people that use Blender and have jobs in different situations and some Blender users that got jobs at Pixar and others that have their own companies, let me tell you, you're, you're worrying. There's no point in worrying about this, really. It's not what you should focus on because what you should focus on, and that will, again, depend on what kind of job you're looking for, what's your dream job or your passion. You should focus on other things like, uh, for example, if you want to be a character artist, you should focus on learning anatomy, uh, style, stylizing, if you want to do stylized characters, uh, likeness, studies, perspective, color, all of these things that will make you a great character artist. So again, Blender is a tool. Any 3D program is a tool. It's like a pencil. Well, you know, when you're drawing with a pencil, you're not gonna worry if a company is gonna hire you or not. You know, or if you're drawing between a pencil HB 0.5 and HB 0.7, you guys get the point. It's just a tool. So you really, I know it might be hard for you to understand that, but uh, that's how it works. That's how life works. And a lot of people, even you know, when they see people doing work online, they see like great character art or environment art, and someone's doing it with, uh, I don't know, 3ds Max, Maya, people quickly assume that the program had a big part of it and it really doesn't. Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't at all. It is a program that's helping you get that result, but there are a lot of similar programs that do the same. At the end of the day, it's really the artist behind that program. So work on your artistic skills, work on all of these important personality and uh, conversational skills, uh, work on all of these other things that take time to build and matter and the program thing really just happens by itself. Anyways, because if you are practicing 3D or digital sculpting, you're going to be using one program or another. And even if you're focusing on Maya, you might end up having a dream job that's in a company that uses Blender and then you're stuck again. You see what I mean? So luckily for us, the program is not the most important thing. Just don't focus on that and focus on the important stuff and you'll be fine. Okay, so that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have any questions, if you agree, disagree, always happy to read what you guys have to say. And last but not least, make sure to share this video with your friends. I'm sure it can help a lot of people out. I'll see you guys in the next one.
Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the next one.